Good evening, good morning. Hello, hello. We are back. Despite the coronavirus, Britain's exit from <laughs> Europe and the shock announcement in the UK. The cars are going to be illegal in 15 years. The car show for your radio returns with a vengeance. We're broadcasting live from London Village, across the globe via the internet, beaming car knowledge, fun facts and useless information straight into your grey matter. We've got the usual fare for you on the show. Car news, great driving roads and lost highways and a corker of a quiz that'll keep you guessing. This week's list of questions to rack your brain is entitled Colour Me Bad. <laughs> and unlike the boy band from the 1990s, I'm not going to be sexing you up. Instead, <laughs> I shall be welcoming a lucky lad who's come all the way down from North London with a chance of winning his train fare back to North London. Yes, this quiz will be asking which colours are genuine car colours used by specific manufacturers <laughs> and which colours are absolute fakes made up my, by my evil mind. And talking of evil minds and fans of Colour Me Bad. <laughs> yes, thanks, Rich. Uh, I can't get enough of Boys to Men, but you'll have to wait for the trial for that one. Uh, <laughs> yes, it is, of course. The, it's a new show. It's a new Great Britain, but the same old host, but less of the old, I think. Uh, welcome to the show. As my colleague mentioned, we have the news on the way. We'll be talking rubbish as usual in the weekly rant. Well, he well, will, I won't be. Uh, we have some interesting questions from listeners in our mailbag, and this week it's full and bulging. We have an amazing vehicle for you in the classic car section. This week it's the highly unusual Volvo 480. Ooh. So... Stay tuned oh, for that, all of that, sense. and more. I'm and Simon more. Jordan, and I want to sex you up to the TikTok. You don't stop all night. <laughs> you make me feel good. I want to rub you down. I want to sex you up. <laughs> does, that, does that work with all the ladies, son? Or is it only ladies of a, a certain age? I wish. <laughs> yeah. And I'm Richard Green, and Una Polona Blanca. I'm just a bird in the sky. Una Polona Blanca. I drink some cider all day. Uaru are Uaru are Yes, Arr. 70s mashup of the Wurzel and the George Baker selection. They're mixing the theme of cider with the Spanish costas, much in the same way the <laughs> British will be doing on holiday this summer and vomiting <laughs> everywhere. Anyway, uh, this is, is Cowboys. Welcome to the show. Okay, it's time for my weekly rant where I chat crap for a few minutes. And it's not just worthless crap, it's valid crap. Crap other <laughs> podcasters won't touch. This channel and this show are completely gratis. We do not get paid for this product and big corporations do not sponsor us. Mm. So journalistically, and I use the term very loosely, we are free agents in search of the truth and nothing but the truth. So help us, Jesus, Allah, Lord Buddha, Vishnu, and of course Mazda, the Zoroastrian god of fire <laughs> and small to middle range budget Japanese cars. <laughs> but I digress. Well, I know this is a news story and we're going to cover it in the news this week. But I think it's a story that will be affecting everyone in the UK in about 15 years time. And it's well worth editorialising all over. The issue is that the government in the United Kingdom, I should say the newly elected government. Well, that that seems ages ago, are planning to ban. And I did say ban the sale of all new petrol, diesel and hybrid cars on these shores by the year 2035. And whilst that may sound way off in the future, and by that time we'll be all living on the moon and wearing jetpacks, <laughs> I'll remind you that 2005 is the same number of years away. So it doesn't sound so long now, does it? Mm. It's part of Boris Johnson's uh, Tory government's drive to make the UK achieve a target of emitting virtually zero carbon by the year 2050. Well, I can tell you right now, that target will be broken when the rising masses of proletariat take to the streets and stick old, Boljo, uh, uh, old Bojo, I should say, on top of the bonfire they've made <laughs> at number 10 Downing Street. At a summit in Glasgow, a city not famed for its environmental friendliness, more like its... Uh, 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 Glaswegian smiles or its ability <laughs> to welcome the English Boris Johnson announced the plans alongside BBC Planet voiceover man and the chap who introduced snooker to black and white television in, on BBC Two in the 1960s Sir David Attenborough now whether you're a fan of going green and you think the world's going to end tomorrow because koala bears are on fire in Australia or you think this is all a bit knee-jerk reaction and the biggest polluters on the planet are China and India and me washing up yoghurt pots to put into the recycling really doesn't matter a damn. Well, whichever side you're on, I can announce that global warming is still going to happen 
whether you drive a diesel or a brand new electric car. These, my friends, are the facts. Diesels are more polluting on a local level than petrol cars. The emissions and the particulate levels are higher. Put simply, they are dirty vehicles in towns and cities and cause lung disease. Petrol cars, marginally less harmful, but they use the, but the, they use the oil you get out of the ground less efficiently than diesel. Producing petrol takes more crude oil than producing diesel. Then we have hybrid cars, which are usually use a little petrol and some electric. They often generate their own electric, which cars such as the Toyota Prius have been around for decades in London. It's a favourite favorite car of the Uber driver. Now, these cars will be banned by the year 2035, which means we'll have to either drive secondhand petrol cars or buy new electric ones. Now, electric cars aren't as green as one is led to believe. In the cities and towns, they're great. No pollution on a local level. And they use their power very efficiently. But where does this power come from? Well, firstly, it comes out of the wall in the form of electric. Great, I hear you cry. Very environmentally friendly. Well, yes, and also no. Almost 50% of the electric in the UK is produced by burning natural gas, which is a fossil fuel and totally not renewable. Another 21% is produced by nuclear power, something that environmentalists don't want to encourage. And less than 25% is made up of renewables such as wind, solar power, hydroelectric and the tears of polar bears. So... <laughs> The majority of electric is made up of nuclear and gas-fired power stations. So electric cars aren't environmentally friendly if they're using CO2 to produce power stations to fuel cars. Mm. Back to this, as discussed a couple of weeks ago, rare earths that, the, that are the power that goes into the batteries to, to make the electric cars, well, we're running out of rare earths. That's why they're called rare earths. They are rare. It's in the name, guys. Coupled to this is the fact that a battery in an electric car is effectively dead after around 10 years, making the vehicle obsolete and not that environmentally friendly, as opposed to my friend's 1948 Land Rover Series 1, which is still running after more than 70 years. Besides this, at the present, we are running on a maximum capacity for electric production in the UK. So how are we going to produce more electricity? Maybe the government are planning to build new power stations that run on oil. <laughs> Hence, we're not cutting out our CO2 emissions. We're just moving the problem from the city and out into the countryside. Look, it, it, to me, it makes sense to cut our carbon emissions, limit our use of polluting vehicles, clean up the country's air. I like it. I have children. I live in a capital city. But to completely ban all petrol, diesel and hybrid cars within 15 years is completely ridiculous. The country will grow into a halt. The economy will crash and we will still be as polluting as we are just in different areas. All this being said, if large global polluters such as China, India, the USA do nothing, little old England cleaning up its act will be the proverbial pissing in the wind. Obviously, by then we won't have a show. So, Simon, I have a master plan. We start mm. buying up all old petrol, diesel, Hondas and Toyotas. We <laughs> stockpile the buggers, all with zero mileage. Then, after 2035... We sell them and we make a killing. It'll be Richard and Simon's old wheels and new deals, although it won't really be a green new deal. I do not. I, I didn't realise that it also covers hybrids as well. Yes. How? So uh, let me get this straight. Half of the money that the government get from petrol sales is tax. Oh, I didn't forget. I forgot about the tax. Well, surely you see that they'll just move the tax onto electricity. Right. But I still don't get how they're just moving it to the power stations, which we don't have enough power in the first place to do all this. Yeah, so we've, we've not got enough power stations currently. We're a, a deficit of power stations. Our old nuclear power stations are too old. We're now asking the Chinese to help us build nuclear power stations <laughs> with the help of Huawei. Let's see mm -hmm. how that works out. Um, I, I, I think it is not been thought out. I think it is a knee-jerk reaction on the part of the government du jour i think they want to sort of see as if they're uh, be seen as if they're doing something well they're not really and it's not a holistic approach and nobody's talking about decent public transport nobody's talking about providing alternatives so people feel you know what i'm not going to drive look how cheap it is look how environmentally friendly it is to jump on the bus and how nice it is to jump on the bus and now you go look how horrible it is to jump on the bus what an awful uh, horrible process why is the bus broken down again but you would you would have to still produce petrol and diesel mm -hmm. because if you've got cars that are running like your, your Land Rover Series 1 which is 70 years old then yeah, surely I, the same thing's going to happen I think that what will happen is if you stop producing new cars there will just be lots of old cars and we'll all I I I I I I, I, I if you go down that road, I think I'll be like 70 driving around the same Honda, but it'll be <laughs> mad maxed up. 
It'll have no, it'll have, it'll be like Cuba, Cuba is now for these 1950s vehicles. It'll have a completely different engine. It'll have a new roof. Uh, the inside won't be exactly the same 19, 19 uh, well, 2000 and, and, and teens car that it is now. It'll, it'll all have different bits all over it. We'll all be driving around in old cars. Mm, I think there's, there will also be a market for businesses opening up to produce these parts. That's oh, yeah, quite yeah, yeah. It's a good industry. That's, that's right. That's what British will so do. So we'll create we'll jobs as well. Pattern parts for every single vehicle that's on the road now. So it'll be a bit like that sketch out of Only Fools and Horses where... Um, his broom. Uh, triggers his broom. Triggers broom. And he says, I've had this broom 25 years. And he said, that's amazing. He said, yeah, I told the mayor it's had 15 new handles and 20 new heads. <laughs> oh. I thank you. Shall we have some news? Yes, let's have some news and some music, okay. please. <laughs> First off this week in Haven't We Just Discussed This Story News, uh, the government is to bring forward the ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars from 2035 and has been attacked by the manufacturers as a quote-unquote date without a plan. The policy, which is now uh, to come in effect five years earlier uh, and include hybrid vehicles, was announced by Bojo Boris Johnson, launched Mm -hmm. at the forthcoming UN COP26 Climate Summit. Uh, while green groups welcomed the news and urged the government to set an even earlier date, really, uh, motoring organisations said the UK was unprepared for electric alternatives by 2035. The Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders said the move risked undermining sales of cleaner hybrid cars now and the government needed to come up with a sustainable plan. <laughs> come up with a plan for the government yes uh, the industries and the green groups both questioned how the latest uh, commitments squared with plans to cut grants for electric vehicles due to be implemented in march the aa president edmund king said drive support measures to clean up the air which i think we all agree uh, and the quality and reduce co2 emissions but these stretch targets are incredibly challenging. We must question whether we will have sufficient supply of full cross-section of zero emission vehicles in less than 15 years. Scottish Power, which operates electricity grids in Scotland and the North of Wales, has previously criticised the energy regulator for limiting how much companies can invest in the application of an electric vehicle revolution over fears that they will hike energy bills. So, uh, Sorry, go on. No, it's uh, so the power the power companies are going. This ain't right. The car manufacturers are going. This ain't right. Mm, but Boris Johnson's going. This is what we're doing. Well, look, it's a, it's obviously it's a sop to the um, it, it's it's a sop to the um, um, environmental lobby. But yeah. the problem is it's backfired on them because there was a great article in the Guardian, and everybody from the AA to uh, the MEB, to, uh, to, to yeah, every, every single electric company. Yeah. And, and, and the left wing and the right wing all went, this doesn't make any sense. It just doesn't <laughs> make any sense because you've not come up with 15 years to do what? To, yeah. you, you've not come up with anything. You're not saying we're going to build a car, we're going to build 15 plants in Glasgow that are going to that are going to make new electric cars. This is going to be done with Tesla. OK, Ford are opening a new plant in Dagenham. It's going to be all electric cars. No. Yeah, that's your job. That's your job as government to do. Not this. Yes. Come up with a mad plan and sit next next to fucking. How old is he now? One hundred and seventy five. Uh, Sir, Sir David Attenborough. Something yes. like that. Uh, Mr. Voiceover man. I love the fact that he brought snooker to BBC Two as when he was controlled <laughs> BBC Two in nineteen sixty eight, and every single and, and the channel was black and white. Uh, mm. coining, coining the phrase. And for those watching in black and white, he's just potted the red. Okay. So right. <laughs> I think we'll leave that. It's, it's, it says it's no, it's no use to nobody. Exactly. As useful as a chocolate radiator. Right. And, um, <laughs> well, we may not have car and in, uh, car industry at all by 2035 news. Britain's new car market has tumbled by 7.3 year on year Ooh. in January, figures published by the Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders. Almost 150,000 cars were registered across this month, down by under 12,000 from the same month last year. Diesel cars, again, declined substantially and uh, the market share below 20% for the first time in 20 years. 
petrol car registrations also dropped by almost 10 percent the uh, smmt blames continued confusion surrounding diesel and clean air zones which i got an email this week telling my my car can go into the clean air zone and <laughs> ongoing weak consumer and business confidence for the fall private sales were hit hardest down 13.9 percent with fleet registrations taking less substantial hit at 2.2 there's some good news, however. Alternatively, fuel cars continue their steady but significant rise throughout 2019, capturing a record of almost 12% of the market. The influx of mild hybrid models was the biggest driver. Diesel mild hybrids. I was I used to smoke those, and I still smoke cigarettes. <laughs> Can I have 20 diesel mild hybrids? And they're up uh, 721% year on year. Wow. Wow, that's insane. Hybrids mm. are up 20.6%. Plug-in hybrids up 111%. Battery vehicles up 204%. Wow. So EVs are growing. Mm. They now make up 2.7% of the market, despite um, last year they were making 0.8%. So EVs are on the way up. Um, hybrids are on the way up. So, yes, guys, you need to get involved with that. Um, uh, the, the other thing I'd say about this, this is totally misleading because we've just come through Brexit. So. Yeah. Like everybody else, I didn't book my holiday till after I wait, waited till Brexit happened, and then I booked my holiday because I was like, <laughs> not sure what's going to happen. Yeah. And, um, and so yeah, um, I will say I did get an I did get an SMS from uh, London Transport telling me that my car was okay to now drive into the centre of London. Oh, which, that's cool. Yeah, which um, pretty much you can come into London on any on almost any vehicle as long as it's not a sort of really old diesel. There's yeah. an extended. Um, uh, pollution zone, isn't there? Which is all the way where I am out in zone six. And That's then right. there's the one which is the which it always kills me that that the who would nobody ever drives into that central 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 bit of London. Because you can't. Think, well, and you, you don't want to. And you can't park when you get there, so nobody goes into that zone. The congestion zone is a joke. I go if I go if I go into London and I go and do some work in East London, I just yeah. drive the Marylebone Road. Past the um, past the uh, planetarium, planet planetarium, past Madame Tussauds, <laughs> up, yeah, up by King's Cross, and then yeah. he's, uh, and then round by Islington, and I'm and I'm sorted. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, generally I think people aren't buying new cars. Keeping up with the neighbours doesn't really matter anymore. Mm. Um, it's seen as as gauche, not environmentally friendly. One thing we haven't mentioned: uh, cars are a lot reliable, aren't they? I they are. Like, yeah. I had in 1998. I had an eight-year-old Escort RS 2000 uh, full-body kit. Yeah. By 2001, that was rusting. So that was 11 years. That was rusting all over. Rusting <clears> in the floor pan. Rusting in. The, uh, I had to. Uh, the, the clutch was going. It had about 98,000 miles on the clock. I have a Honda parked outside. Well, I don't. My wife's in it at the moment. A little Honda Civic, which is now 16 years old. There is no rust on that car. Yeah. It's got the, the thing is, the clock. also, cars are being made with aluminium as well, so they're less likely to rust. Yeah. Um, so they're lasting longer. Mechanically, they're usually quite sound, and people understand about maintaining cars. So, yeah, I, I don't see how they could ever get rid of these, nope. these petrol combustion engines. No, we know. But it's fine. We'll be here. We'll still be here doing the show. We will be, yeah. Uh, should we do some more news? Yes, please. And uh, meanwhile, a rose by any other name will still be as sweet news. Ferrari uh, has become embroiled in a legal dispute with a charity organisation over its plan to use the name Perosangu. Good luck. Perosang. Yeah. Uh, Sang Sangu, like Montague. I'm going to go with that. Yeah, go. Uh, for its first SUV, the name meaning thoroughbred or pure blood was confirmed by Maranello's Porsche Cayenne's rival in 2018, but it has uh, been used by an Italian anti doping charity called the Perosangu Foundation since ah. 2013. Uh, according to the Financial Times report, the car maker claims that the charity has uh, not made enough commercial use of the name to claim exclusivity uh, and it has opened legal proceedings in Bologna. Longer to attempt to obtain the right to use the name. The smaller brand registered Perusangu as a trademark in uh, 2013 and later blocked Ferrari's attempt to trademark it, the name itself. Uh, the first details of the SUV were made public. Ferrari has turned to the law to protect its brand image on several occasions. In 2014, the company set, uh, sent music producer Dead Mouse. I'm guessing that's that the is. one. I'm, not, yeah. I'm yeah. not down with the kids, but I, yeah, I, I guess Mouse. that's the same. Big in uh, America. 
yeah. A, a cease and detest uh, notice after he painted his uh, 458 in a distinctive paint scheme inspired by a yeah, viral that, video. It, surely if it's his car, he can do what the fr- friggin' like with it. Absolutely, yeah. Sure, Ferrari big, don't big still Peter's own that. Balls on the bonnet, whatever. They don't own it. They own yeah. the brand. They don't own the car. When you pay your money to the company, that mm. car is now yours to do what you want. <laughs> I tell you what, Ferrari, it, it really annoys me. Get yeah. another name. It's not hard. Um, yeah. Call it the Ferrari Pure Blood. Um, I <laughs> thought about a Caribbean name. What about yeah. Ferrari Punani? Ooh, that it, could go down well. Because it's going to attract a lot of. Um, I mean, that's the <laughs> idea, really, isn't it? To attract a lot of Punani. <laughs> so, that's the reason you don't buy a Ferrari for. It's one of the reasons you buy a Ferrari, I should say. Just get another name. I, I tell you what, really, you've got the internet these days, so there's no excuse for using. You, you can trawl the internet and you can go through. And if you've got the name of a company yeah. or an idea or a TV program, um, you should go through the internet and, um, and you should just have a good look and make sure you're not copyright infringing anybody but yeah. back in the 1980s and i love this story uh yeah. they, they didn't have um they didn't have um the capacity to do this so it was sort of I, i'm guessing looking through books looking through references and uh, there was uh, dixon's that were electronics uh, shop and company in the uk they had a range of electronic um stereos i think my mate had the ghetto blaster and the walkman uh, well not the walkman the portable uh, tape player Yes, uh, and it was called uh, the uh, uh, the Matsui range. Yes, which that's was right. Great, and it was all made in Ireland. It wasn't made in Japan. <laughs> Unfortunately, Matsui was the name of a Japanese uh, general who committed lots of war crimes. So mm. it was like walking round uh, with, with, the, <laughs> with the with the latest stereo by Goebbels, effectively. Mm. Yes, the the oh, Martin dear. Borman headphones. Yes, so that was unfortunate. I think probably get over yourselves. Uh, and finally, in I'd rather walk than drive. One of these news. Yes, Dacia is set to uh, bring a factory fit LPG liquid petroleum gas <laughs> version of its car to the UK because uh, they're not finger on up. the pulse. <laughs> yeah, for the UK after years of restricting the money saving models to the continent. The so-called EcoG system mm. will be available in the spring across its full range. The Sandero, uh, the Sandero Stepway, the Logan mm. MCV, the Logan MCV Stepway and who <laughs> forget the 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 Floor said a uh, source close to the parent firm Renault. The cars are said to cost around four hundred pounds more than the regular one liter three cylinder petrol models on which they are based. LPG natural gas compressed into liquid form. Cars use more than half of the uh, half of uh, cars more. Car use that's right. Sorry, teeth back. <laughs> Cars use more of it than petrol, but yes. the CO2 emitted is less and the cost per litre is around half. So yeah. it's, yeah. Uh, there are currently 1,400 LPG filling stations in the UK, according to the Low Carbon Vehicle Partnership. Dacia's models are dual friendly, meaning they can run on both LPG and petrol. In mm. France, the Duster Eco G is rated at 125 uh, GKM running on petrol or 111 GKM on LPG, the LPG tank is fitted in the boot, but the spare wheel well, um, meaning the luggage space isn't compromised, but you won't have a spare wheel. So it's going to go mm. into the spare wheel well. Almost all taxis and tuk-tuks in Bangkok are LPG. Uh, I'm not sure that it's really clean on a particular level because I remember both the tuk-tuks and yeah. the taxis churning out lots of black smoke. Um, plus, I don't think I'd want to go slower in a Dacia. <laughs> So let me get this straight. So where everyone's moving towards electric vehicles. Yeah. They say introduce a steam locomotive uh, and you'll be burning wood to power. Yeah. It, it's almost as if uh, Dacia and Romania are still 20 years behind because their cars are 20 year old Renault Clios. That's right. And they've just discovered this thing called LPG. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told you steam is coming next for the Dacia. <laughs> the new day, the new Dacia Mallard. Um, <laughs> That will be steaming this... out of the station there. Oh, that will be the Dacia. Ah, oh, the, the estate will be called like the Ploughman or something like that. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Powered by horses. Shall we Shall we have some lost highways? Uh, or we could do a classic car. Either well, or. Let's do a classic car. Hang on, hang on. I've got the wrong music cue. Oh, for <laughs> God's sake. You can't get the star, folks. Let's do some classic car. Yes. Let's 
guy sounds like he's tuning guitar. up. <laughs> oh yeah. He's just a session musician. Alright, nice. Paco, shut up! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, classic cars. There was a time when Volvo only produced cars using a ruler and a set square. Uh, but that changed in 1986 when the Swedish car maker man- uh, debuted a sporty new model. The Volvo 480 is the car we're talking about, which was absolutely unusual. Uh, the front was sporty while the back was a cross between a coupe and an estate. Yes, that is the car we're talking about, the 480 Volvo. Uh, first one on display in 1986 the Gine- at the Geneva Motor Show, the 480 marked a turning point for the company. It was their first front-wheel drive car, available in just one body style, uh, despite being made on a saloon and hatchback model platform, for the which uh, was the 440 and the 460. Uh, it only had four seats three doors and was marketed as a coupe in Europe, but as a two plus two sports wagon in the US. Uh, other unusual features include a frameless glass rear hatch, which is, uh, I don't think anybody does that now. Uh, it was the only Volvo to feature pop-up headlights as well, uh, which was a design feature to comply with the US safety standards. The car was designed to shed the frumpy image and was aimed at, who do you think it was aimed at? It was aimed at the 25 to 40 year olds <sighs> with they say, uh, a higher than average education with a career. <laughs> that really was the, the, the audience really? they were going for. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, most Volvos were designed and built in Gothenburg in Sweden, uh, though for the 480, they actually found responsibility out uh, for the design and production to the DAF Cars Factory in the Netherlands, ah. which is good. Uh, the 480 sold reasonably well in the UK, despite the fact it was powered, or should I say underpowered, by an asthmatic 102 BHP 1.7 litre Renault engine. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, although in 1988, that did, they did did introduce a 120 bhp turbocharged engine which was a bit more respectable uh incidentally the suspension was designed and tuned by none other than lotus and in their uh-huh. words volvo described the 480 as quote unquote well endowed with in inv- with advanced electronics quite how oh, it's well endowed okay. i'm not quite sure um the biggest improvement of the car in the car's lifetime was in 92 when they fitted a two liter 110 bhp engine uh, and a number of detailed improvements were visited upon on the car in 93 including fitment of driver's airbag seatbelt pretensioner side impact protection all the stuff that volvo has been associated with um a two liter gt limited edition version was introduced in june and the final two litre celebration version was unveiled in may 1995 Uh, with a final production run of only 480 cars this model with two-tone leather upholstery a cd player alloy wheels and air conditioning uh, was the most desirable the interior uh, was a good deal more spacious than the three door layout suggests, with a folding 50 50 rear seat bench uh, and enough room for four adults. It had height, adjustable steering column, and uh, multi adjustable driver's seat allowed for comfortable driving position. Uh, the side effect of also having front wheel drive was also it had excellent space in the boot. So, as with most Volvos, very practical. Uh, this features stowage bins in the side uh, trim panels and a lockable central box between the rear seats uh, as well as in the boot floor which could be used to keep valuables out of sight very clever um so what should you look for in the 1.7 litre engines they are notoriously rattly because they are from renault uh, especially mm. at idle and most buyers would prefer the smoother two litre unit early cars also had a system that was linked to the speed of uh, of the car and their windscreen wipers so uh, depending on your forward velocity it would determine how fast your your wipers would go but they often went haywire Jesus, along with the that's electric. like something out of the 1940s what the fuck <laughs> Along with all the information centre, it all used to go wonky donkey. Uh, the pop-up head- headlights are also prone to failure, and those that do still work often squeal like uh, they're stuck, uh, like a stuck pig. <laughs> stuck pig. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look for rust problems around the car seals and the tailgate openings. The seats are also not made for the most hard-wearing materials. However, a hmm. clutch assembly will cost you around only £140. A new catalyst from around £400. An alternator should be close to about £190. And a radiator for 175 so actually not too bad. Shade, a yeah. new tail lamp is around £65, and a rinse screen would cost you in the region of 115 So 
Here's the big headline. I looked today online and found a final 480, which is the mm-hmm. two litre celebration version, version mm-hmm. in burgundy red metallic with an MOT yeah. till December 2020. Yeah. So almost a year. Yeah. 95 N registered with a mere 15,755 wow. miles on the clock. It was located in Peterborough and you could have yeah. all of that for Go on. 4995. That's cheap. Five grand for what is quite an unusual Volvo. Very unusual. Um, they didn't really hit the right market um, in terms of that they were aiming at the what, young 20, people. 20, 25 to 40 year olds with higher than average education and a career. Well, they, the higher <laughs> average education they got right, because my old English teacher used to drive one of these. Well, I think she was in her 50s. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, it was my English teacher at A-levels drove one of these. Um, mm. And my brother-in-law, uh, sorry, my cousin's husband, I should say, had one um, because he said it's, like, it's a great shooting brake. So it's good. The yeah. back falls down. And he could get bags of plaster in there. Um, <laughs> he, was, he, he wasn't loving this car. He probably used it as a workhorse to get around. I I think they don't look bad. They're very quirky. They're very different. Um, I think in ten years' time that car will be double the price. Probably. I think they're going. They're, it's an. I know it's an eighties car, but it's an eighties nineties car. They're mm. going to be. They're going to get more and more popular. But they they're, they're, they're going against them. Renault. <laughs> Renault yes. Engine. It's. It, I I would like to have been that meeting when they decided. Oh yeah, we'll we'll put uh, a French engine that's not very reliable and just horrible yeah. in there. Yeah. But mm. different, very different looking cars. That's not expensive. Yeah. So, yeah. Why not? Why not go out and uh, say, uh, I don't know what's yes, please in uh, Swedish. Yeah. In, in the uh, when I was reading through what we were going to do. Ooh, yes. Um, it was, uh, I should say this only once. And I think that was French. But yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is in Swedish. Uh, yes. <laughs> hooda, hooda, hooda <laughs> to the Volvo 480. <laughs> Indeed. Oh. That music must mean it's Lost Highways. It's Lost Highways time. Yep, this is the feature where listeners email in and give us their favourite roads and the reason they love them. It could be a quaint coastal road that leads down to the sea. Alternatively, it could be a straight two-lane blacktop that leads to infinity and invites you to gun the petal. The bedal? The petal? The pedal <laughs> to the metal. Sorry. It's my flowers. <laughs> Glue those. Gun those petals to that metal. Whatever your poison, let us know your perfect driving road here at Car Boys. You can get in touch with the show. It's car boys at outlook.com. Boys with a Z. Indeed. And we're off to America. We are. We got the first one this week. It's from Debbie 342430. Hang on, wait. Debbie 342438. Yeah. That's from Dallas. I, I'm guessing she's the infamous Debbie Does Dallas. Yeah. Uh, she says the Twisted Sisters. So this is getting worse. What's is amongst that the group. <laughs> is amongst uh, 36, the group. 24, 38. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Uh, it's uh I, i'm not sure uh she said the twisted sisters is amongst the greatest driving roads in the world uh while well, they say uh they always do it bigger in texas especially does De- debbie <laughs> <laughs> uh, known as the twisted I sisters by now, it she's still going strong probably uh, yeah uh known as she's uh known as the twisted sisters these three connecting ranch roads in the hill country near san antonio have over 200 twists and turns beneath them uh between them beneath them is something else uh whether you are on a bike or in a car the route is an exhilarating experience and you won't soon forget it uh with the wind whipping against your windshield uh Curve steering you. This is just full of filth. Uh, curve steering you <laughs> close to the hillside and with steep drop offs and towering rocks yeah, on either side, creating narrow tunnels. <laughs> it's basically a free roller coaster ride. Start on the Ranch Road 335, you'll head south past a Boxdale until you hit the RR. Uh, I don't know what the RR is. A Ranch Road. Uh, Ranch Road Ranch 337 Road, yeah. near Campwood. Ooh, I say. Um, the uh, we. <laughs> Wind will whip you against the car in a violent manner. A lot of these letters we get are all about violence. I don't know why. Um, um, car drivers. Yeah. Annoyed. 
uh, almost as if you're trying to crack the windows and you, when you enter the vehicle, just like Tesla. Uh, as terrifying as it sounds, it's even more exhilarating. Uh, brace yourself for an incredible sharp curve as you enter Campwood, who I say, uh, where Ranch Road 335 ends and 337 begins. You'll head northeast at a 45 degree angle for a good while, uh, and that's where the real fun begins. You won't believe the amount of twists and turns on 337. There are over 65 loops in the first 15 miles alone, which is about half the road uh, that means that by the time you reach the end you'll have changed direction 130 times it is like a roller coaster yeah sounds uh, good i hope you don't get dizzy if you'll be uh, willing to take a little detour keep heading east on the 337 pass uh leaky until you reach uh vanderpool uh, no that's deadpool i'm thinking of uh yeah. vanderpool uh, located is the the lost maple state natural area one of the most breathtaking parks in texas uh just head uh, straight back to the way you came afterwards to set off on the final leg of your journey so wow. there you go debbie 36 24 38. 34, 30, 38 wow she sounds like a great girl uh yeah i've not been uh, it sounds an interesting <laughs> road i did i did something similar in australia there's a little there's, yeah. a, there's just like a switch back north of um get it right cairns and you go yeah. through this sort of four thousand year old forest and you are you can't really do more than about 20 miles an hour it's wow. literally you turn and you turn and you turn and you turn and um on that night i was listening to acdc on the radio so i'm in australia driving along the highway with i think probably highway to hell or something is, is it like a giant hot wheel set yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty much <laughs> And uh, I think I, I, I'd really splashed out on the hire car and I had a Daihatsu charade, Jeez. which <laughs> covered in rust. <laughs> the guy that rented to me was Australian and went, wow, the radio works, mate. <laughs> that would mean, wow, the radio works. Man, yeah, most of these are buggered. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Right, um, hang on a second. I've just, I've, I've got some guests. Stand by, stand by. Okay. Remember, if you'd like to contact the show, you can do so in many different ways. You could uh, find us on Facebook. That's car uh, hyphen boys at car boys with four Zs. Uh, that's car hyphen boys at car boys with four Zs. Uh, you can find us on Twitter, car dash sorry, car hyphen, hyphen boys hyphen, yeah. at uh, car underscore boys. And you can also find us on Instagram, car underscore boys with three Zs, because that was all they can uh, give us. Buggers and Instagram, which is the one we can post private parts on? Is it Instagram or is it? Yes, no, 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 Snapchat. Uh, Snapchat, we won't be doing that. <laughs> We're but, not on uh, that yet. <laughs> uh, I, have my, I haven't got a big enough lens on my camera. Right, uh, <laughs> Sean456, Irish expat, lives on the south coast of Spain and says his favorite driving road is his local one. It's Ooh. called the Sh Sugarcane Road route. It's a lazy drive alongside the Mediterranean. Ooh. I wonder if Sean runs an Irish bar. I uh, probably Possibly. Don't. Yeah, yeah. Um, it said the sugarcane route is a lazy drive alongside the Mediterranean, taking in some sights, sounds, and some sunshine in the summer. Covers a distance of approximately fifty-five kilometers, uh, which for Americans and English people, I guess, is about thirty-five miles. Situated between Malaga and Motril, also the route also known as the Costa Tropical, because of the proliferation of tropical crops such as avocados, Ooh. custard apples. Uh -huh. And sugarcane. In addition to Malaga, the route passes the towns of Montreal, Salobrena, Alomenca, Neja, Torox, Valex, Ooh, Malaga, Rincon de la Victoria, and uh, lands are occupied by the Romans, the Phoenicians, the Arabs, and the Carthaginians. Uh, today are preserved traces of these civilizations, which add to the appeal of already offered on the beautiful beaches and coves in the area. He Sean says, stop off for tapas and thaveta. Hey, along in, his the bar. in his bar, <laughs> I'll give you the address of the old bar there. So, uh, plenty of Guinness and lots of football. Um, yeah, uh, so that sounds quite an interesting little uh route. Uh, I might have to uh do that one sometime. Thank you, Sean. Thanks so much. Fantastic. Uh, time now for the letters, which we did yes, beautiful. Uh, okay, uh, so which need letters? Uh, we've got Suki999 from Tokyo. Uh, they write to us. She says she has a key card at the moment, uh, but would like to buy uh, something more exciting. Uh, coming up later on, we have the yeah. quiz. Uh, <laughs> something more exciting. Uh, but uh, what do we guy? What do we guys suggest? She is single, no kids. Hang on, this is not a dating website uh she's single no kids and yeah. has a limited budget of around uh a quarter of a million yen which in english money is around two thousand yeah pounds. i got it i was buying her all sorts of things when i saw this email come through and said quarter of a million yen she had like <laughs> 
<laughs> she had 15 cars. And then I went, oh, great, £2,000. Mm. <laughs> the problem is, uh, if it's a key car, yeah. um, she, I think we, she, um, she's got to get a key car with a turbo. So right. older Daihatsu Copen. Um, <sighs> Do like the Copen. Uh, Suzuki Swift GT. Um, they tax you heavily in Japan if you do have an older car. That's the other okay. issue. Yeah. So my theory was go crazy because she's single. She's yep. a girl that likes to, I don't know what, you know, she, she's a girl. She's a girl about town in Tokyo. How With about two a grand in her pocket? How about a classic 1970s Honda? Ooh, Lots yeah. of chrome. Honda Matic Auto. So if she's the, I think they did CB 400 Hawk was one of them. So you could get a nice, a nice fast, but it's a, it's an automatic gearbox in those. So it's easy Ooh, to drive. You twist and turn. That's different. Yeah. Maybe. What do you think? I don't know enough about the Japanese car market. That's my problem. I, I don't either. Uh, two, two grand. I'm, I'm guessing what we're we talking about. We're talking about the Suzuki Swift. We said the Daihatsu, the, the, I, I don't know. She's got no fat, no, no kids. I was going to say the charade, but maybe the, not. The problem, as I said, older cars do they do hit you with a tax in Japan? Ooh, I think. Okay, because they want to encourage a the, the 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 local car industry, and they also want to encourage less polluting cars. So mm. yeah, go for a right. bike. She's got nothing to lose. Go for a bike. We head further to the icy chills of Iceland next with Alex Yeah Yeah Forty Five. He says winter <laughs> is here. <laughs> And uh, she wants to head off to the sun. Reckons she's going to go to the Dominican Republic in the Caribbean. Ooh. Nice. Should she rent a car when she gets there? In a word, no. You can, but I wouldn't. The Dominican Republic is a lovely place, relatively quiet roads, but there's virtually no traffic laws. There's no law for drink driving, for example. They will not breathal breathalyze you. So my advice is if you do hire a car, don't drive after dark. There's just no law. Um, uh... Like much of the Caribbean, it can be a little sketchy at night. Um, I've been there four times. Yeah. Never ever have I hired a car. Okay, I'd hire a taxi, which I've done, um, and and it's not that expensive. And let him take the strain. I mean, okay. there's plenty of places nice that you could drive, but I you just look at it and go, mm. yes. Especially, I don't know. She might she might be going with a friend. Uh, if she's if it's a woman on her own, I wouldn't drive around the Dominican Republic. Nice place. Mm. There right. you go, Alexis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she's uh, Alexis. Yeah, yeah. Forty-five. I'm guessing mm. that's also her age, possibly. Could be. Could be. Mm. Uh, and uh, could be the fact have... she likes singles, Simon. Possibly. Yes. Yes, she likes hit <laughs> singles, which yes. probably would also uh, guess that she is the age of forty-five. Uh, that is absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, number, we have an email from Carl DMT from Edinburgh. Uh, he is an oldish Vectra, Vauxhall Vectra from 2007. Uh, he gets a weird rumbling sound from the rear wheels when it dries. It uh, seems to be getting worse. My first thoughts were possibly bearing. Yes, I was going to say, maybe one of those is loose. Uh, that's not a big fix. Um, mm. Could be uh, struts, bent suspension components, uh, bushings, link arms, you need all that inspected. Um, you need to, yeah, you need to get it on a lift. Uh, I had, what did I have? I had a Fiesta and I went round a roundabout, clipped the roundabout slightly, and that did one of my bearings. Wow, so that's bearing. why I thought it would be, it, I, I'm assuming bearing slightly bigger on drum brakes. I'm guessing the Vetch has yeah. got drum brakes in the rear. Not sure that um, I would have thought they'd have been disc all round, but. Um, mm. My wife had a, a similar thing on hers at the front, br loose brake pads. Uh, uh, okay. pads was, uh, we had this. I said, "Oh, it's bearings." And he, and he went and he went. I just give the give the guy in the, the garage a fiver. I went, "Why? Said, what do you mean? What? That's it." He said, "Brake pads were slightly loose. We just retightened it. That was not bad. It cost me a, a pint of beer in a pub." <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we've got uh, Joe DiMaggio from NYC, from New York. Hang City. on. Joe yeah, DiMaggio, the American rounders player. Uh, yes, the yes, the, <laughs> the famous American rounders player who's been dead since 1982. Oh, okay. um, Joe DiMaggio, you know, went went crazy at the end, and I think was walking around New York with quarter of a million in dollars in his in a suitcase. Wow. He was completely off his box. I think this is a different. Oh no, this is Joe D. Magic. Ah, I see. So I see what he's done there. From NYC, he's got in touch with us uh, from the USA. Says, I love the show. And I quote, Your lime is, is all right, but I gotta ask you, when the hell are you gonna <laughs> do a few more features on decent American cast and not foreign junk? 
He has a 1972 Ford Mustang Ooh, Max yes. One. Oh, good grief. That is a nice car. He yeah. uses it only for weekends, but he said the cost of the gas is killing him. Well, you're lucky you're not in the UK, where <laughs> gasoline costs or petrol costs <laughs> around £5.50 a gallon. Yeah. That's around 8 to $9 dollars US dollars. In New York, it's a mere $3 per gallon, and even less if you get out of the city, places like Texas or Kentucky. Um, the problem is, Joe, you've got a huge gas guzzling car. Mm. Not there's anything wrong with that. These are 1970s muscle cars, so they ended for a reason. There was a petrol crisis in the 1970s. Yep. Uh, they used too much gas. I mean, I'm guessing with that car, 5 to 10 mpg. Uh, if you're lucky. If you're lucky. Got a light foot. Yeah. Now, folks in Australia have converted. Now, this is uh, the last time I was in Australia was a few years ago. But mm. a lot of what they've, they've got utes out there, which are like their pickup trucks. What? The young. Oh, I was going to say the young people. The, the utes. utes. The ute people, not the ute people, as, 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 as the youth in the UK are referred to. <laughs> but the utes, a utility vehicle, <laughs> mate. They've converted their 1970s pickup trucks with LPG tanks. Oh, uh, OK. The back, just because the cost of fuel is, is rising in Australia. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of that. The uh, Doing a conversion on a classic Mustang, um, you've got to be careful. You're not going to devalue it. Mm, it will yeah. certainly not improve the performance. I would suggest you just got to suck it up. I'm sorry, Joe. Uh, I think yeah, you don't want to really mess around with it, do you? If it is a real beautiful car. And just, and just think to yourself, well, I use this occasionally. I use this on the weekends. I don't yeah. know how far he drives on the weekends. Um yeah, I'm afraid that, that you've got not much choice, man, my friend. Yeah. That would be the, the, the thing we would suggest. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Mm. Right, shall we have a bit of quizage? Oh, yes, my favourite time of the show. Is the right answer. Hang on, the crowd are in, the crowd are in. Here they are. Ooh, they're quite shut rowdy up. today. Shut up! Yeah, yeah, this. Oh, they're back again. <sighs> Audiences <laughs> can't live with them, can't kill them. Right, nothing to do with the 1980s boy band, thank goodness. This week's quiz is Colour Me Bad. Ooh, I wanna sex you up. This week's Take focus is on the colour of favourite cars <laughs> and whether or not it's a believable colour. Remember the 1970s? Everything yes. was orange or beige. Uh, the 1980s, it was all electric blue. And uh, then, of course, you... Oh, God, the 1990s. Pastels and metallics galore. Since the year 2000, cars have been either white or grey or black. Um, well, this week, it's going to be a case of true or false in a car quiz, Colour Me Bad. I'll be asking a young lad who's come out all the way on the bus... Uh, from the main streets of Anfield to the leafy suburbs of southwest London, whether or not he can identify the true colours of car manufacturers. It's a bit like Cindy Lauper, but looks <laughs> slightly less like a crack whore. <laughs> anyway, the quiz uh, will go along these lines. I will give you a car manufacturer and a the colour they created for their vehicles, and you have to tell me whether it's true or false. Joining me tonight... Hang on, here's the crowd again. Joining me tonight, a lovely lad, Cole Simon, uh, has come all the way from Enfield. Anything you'd like to say uh, to, to and say hello to anybody tonight, Simon? Uh, I'd like to say hello to my mum and dad. I'm really looking forward. I, I hope, hopefully, I, I'll win this prize. Hopefully, and I'll win my, my ticket back. Otherwise, you'll be living on the streets of southwest London. Super smashing. Great. Right, here we go. This week's quiz, Colour Me Bad. And if you're American and listening, don't worry. We've spelt colour correctly with a silent Q. First off, <laughs> In the yes. Quiz. First off in the quiz. Hang on a second. I've got uh, another of my guests coming into the... Uh, yes, take Ooh. that out, please. Out you go. Thank you. Thank you. See you in a bit. Bye now. Say bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Yes, my son in the room. Lovely. Right. First off, Ford is the manufacturer. And yes. The color was Rosso Red. Is that true or false? True or false? Oh, I, I think this is an easy one. I think it's definitely true. It was an XR3i colour as well, if at some point as well. It was. I had the Ford Fiesta in Rosso. Yeah. Moving to older manufacturer. Austin yes. was the manufacturer. 
The colour was desert yellow. Is that true? <laughs> oh, Austin <laughs> was the manufacturer and in the 1970s, and the colour was desert yellow. True or false? True or false? Desert yellow. Uh, which year was this? Were you saying? 70s? In the 1970s. Uh, we're thinking possibly desert yellow, maybe like Coronation Chicken. I'm going to say that's true as well. Uh-uh. Mustard Ooh. yellow, yes. No to the desert yellow. I think that was an Ooh. army colour from uh, the 1940s. Moving on. Question three. Citroen is the manufacturer. Yes. The colour in the 1980s was Pacific blue. True or false? True or false? Pacific blue. 80s. 80s. Blue was the colour. So I'm going to say true again. You are correct. Yes. You've got another one correct there. Yes. Uh, Pacific blue was the colour offered on my Citroen AX. Ooh. Back with Ford. And the colour from the 1980s was Mercury grey. Oh, true. I love this oh. colour. That's definitely a true. I love that colour. Mercury grey. You get them with Cosworth. Yes. And yes. Mercury grey was the colour on many Fords of the 1980s. Back. Uh, moving to the Far East now. And Infinity is the manufacturer. The Ooh. colour was Moonlight White. This is a modern colour from the Far East. Infinity or uh, Mazda, I guess. Uh, the manufacturer, the colour was Moonlight White. True or false? True moonlight or false? White. Mm, I'm going to say, is Moonlight really white? Uh, I'm going to say it's false. Uh, uh, it was actually true. The colour was moonlight white, offered uh, on a number of Infinity cars. Back in the UK again, the car producer was Land Rover. Yes. The colour was blood moon red. True or false? True or false? Oh, that, that sounds almost hunting-like. I'm going to say that's true. Uh, <gasps> I'm afraid it's false. It really? Red wasn't a colour. Um, I, I think maroon red was a colour. Land Rover, very simple descriptions of their colours. Not that uh, um, oh. uh, uh, um, enthusiastic uh, or uh, creative. OK, across to the USA. The manufacturer was Mercury, of course, was Ford. We go back yes. to the 1960s. The colour was Santa Monica blue. True or false? Mercury, Ford, the um, era was the 1960s, and the colour... Was Santa Monica blue? True or false? True or Santa false? Santa Monica blue. Ooh. Uh, it's got an American name, so I'm going to say, uh, uh, ooh, but no, was blue a colour in, in, in there? Ooh. False? Correct. Ooh. They had a Miami blue, but Santa Monica, still not a very fashionable place. The hippies lived there in the 1960s. So they didn't have a Santa Monica blue, but they had a Miami blue. So you are correct. Doing quite Fantastic. well. Ooh. So far, four out of seven. OK, we go uh, crazy again. Uh, go to, um, In the 1970s, it's the manufacturer is Chrysler. Did they have a colour called Plum Crazy? False? <laughs> I'm going to say it's false, but I'm hoping it's true. <laughs> Uh, it was true. They had a colour <laughs> called Plum Crazy. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Meanwhile, the other side of the pond, we're in Europe with the German manufacturer. Yes. Uh, Munich, Munich's favourite BMW. 1990s colour, Obsidian Black. Was it true or false? True or false? Obsidian oh, Black. That sounds kind of mean. So I'm going to have to true on that uh, one. I'm afraid it's false. <sighs> I make that up off the top of my head. <laughs> right, uh, we're going to give you. We've got two more to go. Finally, okay. uh, okay. uh, uh, colour me bad quiz. We have Rolls Royce. Yes. Golf blue metallic. Has it ever been a colour for the manufacturer of fantastic cars such as the Silver Shadow and the Corniche? Mm -hmm. Rolls Royce golf blue metallic. Golf blue. I don't metallic. Want to uh, I would say that's false. You are correct. You you are correct. Uh, yes, uh, I think they had a blue. They they don't really do metallic. It's yes. Rolls Royce after all. Now your money's safe. Your bend is bunny safe. But would you like to go for a bonus question when you could walk off with a speedboat and or a caravan? Oh, speedboat would be good to get me from uh, do, 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 South West London town field. Yes, I'm going to go for the bonus question. Do, 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 do. OK, because I guess what you'd do is you'd drive the speedboat all the way up the Thames uh, and then you'd, you'd drive it up uh, maybe the Grand Union Canal mm. to take yeah. you to Hamden. River Lee. I'll go for River Lee. And the River Lee. OK. Yeah. Final question. 
Are you ready? Don't be nervous. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. You bend your bully and your money's safe. Your bus fare's safe. We go back to the late 1990s and early 2000s and focus on the British manufacturer of Vauxhall. Ooh. Did okay. they have a colour code called Aztec <laughs> Gold? Iced Should or fall? Aztec Gold. Oh. As in the ancient empire of the Aztecs and um, famed Montezuma. Did they have a colour called Aztec Gold? I'm going to go for, and I'm, I'm going to guess it's kind of like that that baby diarrhea bile kind of colour. I'm going to go for true. Yes, it's Yay! true. Well done, young man. Well done. Yes, uh, of course it was true. Fantastic. I, I had a uh, brother-in-law who had a Corsa in a beautiful Aztec gold, which I think was missing a, a wing mirror. <laughs> replaced by a bit of gaffer tape. So thanks for taking part, Simon. We've ensured you have a one-way single back to Enfield on the number R70 and the X345 buses. With only two Fantastic. changes, you should be there before Sunday. So good luck with all that. <laughs> uh, that's about it from us at Carboys. Thank you for tuning in to the show. We're finishing slightly early today. We're coming Are in we? 50, 55 minutes. Oh, okay. I thought we'd got longer, chatted, chatted crap for longer than that. But no, it's apparently... Slick. We're slick. Yeah, slick tonight. And as it's a podcast and we're not uh, going up to the news at the top of the hour, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, all uh, your listeners, all your support. We now have somebody, uh, an American guy, listens to us from San Francisco. Oh, fantastic. So we are oh. reaching out across. So we need to do more like uh, Joe DiMaggio said. Hey, more cars from America. So I better get doing some more research about American, uh, as they say in Boston. Yes. yes. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah, that's it from this, uh, this week. Email the boys at car hyphen boys, boys with a Z at outlook.com. Car hyphen boys, boys with a Z at outlook.com. We will endeavor to answer your questions, whether they're car related or not. Facebook, we are car hyphen boys at car boys, one, two, three, four Zs at the end. Twitter, car hyphen boys at car underscore boys. And uh, you've got a, what's the other one, Instagram? It's Instagram, yes. It's car underscore boys with three Zs. Yay! Thank you for tuning in. Go away and, um, you know, try and find another way of we getting around without the use of petrol or diesel. I shall be using a magic carpet this week. What about you, Simon? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be using a tricycle. Tricycle. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. <laughs>